All right, here we're looking at a block which slides down a smooth ramp to a flat surface. And there's friction between this block and the flat surface so that eventually the block is going to skid to a stop. And today we're going to solve for three things here. We're going to solve for the total distance the block skids along this flat surface before stopping. We'll also solve for the velocity of the block when it's traveled only part way across the rough surface. And last, we're going to solve for the velocity of the block at the bottom of the hill. Now, I know that maybe seems like a strange order to solve these problems in, but the reality here is a lot of people think you have to solve for the velocity of the block at the bottom of the hill first, and then carry that number into the rest of the problem. And that's not true, but I'll show you why that is as we work through this problem. Now, this entire problem is centered around the conservation of energy. And if we look at what's happening to the energy of this block in this problem, the block has some mechanical energy at any point along this, this track. Now up here where the block begins, it has mechanical energy, which is initially potential energy. Now you may remember, mechanical energy is made up of potential and kinetic energy. Since the block is being released from rest right here, all of that energy is potential. None of it is kinetic. But as the block goes down the hill, it's going to lose gravitational potential energy. That energy is going to turn into kinetic energy. Then when the block hits this rough surface here, it's going to be the force of friction, or really work by friction, that takes away the mechanical energy of the block, turning that energy into heat. But the big issue that people struggle with in this problem is how to structure this problem mathematically. So we're trying to solve for the distance this block is going to travel along this rough surface. But putting these ideas together and somehow getting a displacement out of this can be a challenge. So what we're going to do is look at mechanical energy as it relates to the work energy theorem. You see, the initial mechanical energy of some object, plus the non-conservative work done on that object, is equal to the final mechanical energy of that object. Now, when I say non-conservative work, I mean work done by any force that can't store energy. That is gravity or springs, typically. And all we're going to do is just lay out this equation like this and treat it like a form to fill out. It's almost like your taxes. You see, in this problem, initially, the block isn't moving, so there's no initial kinetic energy. Now, it has some initial gravitational potential energy, and we can solve for that. Remember, gravitational potential energy is given by mgh. So looking at the mass of our block, that's 3 kilograms, times 9.8, that's the acceleration due to gravity, times h, the height, which in this case is 4 meters, we can solve for the initial gravitational potential energy of the block. That's 117.6 joules. Now, as the block goes down the hill and then across this rough surface, in the end, the block is going to be stopped, meaning it's not going to have any kinetic energy. And it's going to be sitting on the ground at this height of zero, meaning it has zero potential energy either. So ultimately, all that's happening in this problem is the potential energy that the block starts with is all lost to friction. Or going down here to our math, we can say that the initial potential, which is 117.6 joules, is all going to be lost to friction meaning the work by friction is going to be negative 117.6 joules. Now, we're a little closer to solving this problem for displacement, but we need to relate this amount of work that friction did to this displacement. Now, you may remember, work is given by the equation Fd cosine theta, where F is the force doing work on the block, in this case friction, D is how far it's going to slide, that's what we're solving for, and theta is the angle between the force, which is backwards, and the displacement, which is forward. Now, expanding this out, we know friction is given by the equation mu Fn, which in this case is actually going to be mu Mg, because this block is sitting on a level surface. So, subbing in that equation for friction here, we get the work by friction is mu MgD cosine theta. And putting our numbers into the problem, we're given a coefficient of friction of 0.5. The block has a mass of 3 kilograms. G is 9.8, and the angle between the displacement forward and the friction backwards is 180 degrees. And solving for the displacement, we find the block is going to skid forward 8 meters across this rough surface before coming to a stop. And going back to energy over here, uh, the block's going to stop at this point right here. It can't go any further because, from an energy perspective, it will have lost all the energy. There's no more kinetic energy for friction to take away. Therefore, it's literally going to have stopped. 
Now, the next thing I want to show you how to solve for is the velocity of this block when it's moved halfway across this flat surface. You see, when it's moved only partway across the surface, it will have lost some, but not all, of the kinetic energy to friction. So going back to this equation, again, we can say the block starts at rest and has some initial potential. But at this point right here, we're not changing anything on the left side of the equation. The right side of the equation is going to be different. You see, at this point right here, where the block's still moving, there's still some kinetic energy in the block. That's not going to have any potential, but there is still that kinetic, which we're going to have to solve for. Now, since the block's only going to have traveled halfway across the surface, friction won't have done a full 117 joules of work on this block yet. Going back to our equation for the work done by friction, it's mu mgd cosine theta. The block's only going to have traveled forward 4 meters. That's halfway across the surface. Plugging in the numbers, we find that the work by friction at this point right here is only 58.8 joules, and that's negative. So if the block starts with 117 joules of energy here, and in skidding halfway across the surface, it loses 58.8, that means there's still going to be 58.8 joules of kinetic energy right here. So setting the kinetic energy at this point equal to 58.8 joules, we can solve for the velocity of the block, and that's 6.26 meters per second. And you'll notice, we didn't have to solve for the velocity of the block right here. That part didn't matter. See, the nice part about this equation right here is it only really worries about or takes into account for the initial and final states of this object. We really don't care all that much about what's happening in between, so long as we've dealt with this non-conservative work term correctly. But just to drive the point home here, I want to solve for the velocity of the block when it's right here. Uh, and one of the really weird and counterintuitive parts of this problem is that the block right here is not going to be going twice as fast as it is right there. I know there's the tendency to think that if the block skids halfway across this rough surface, it's going to lose half its speed, but that's not true. You see, again, turning to mechanical energy, right here the block had 117.6 joules of potential energy. And as the block goes downhill here, all of that potential is going to turn into kinetic. So right here, before friction started doing work on this block, we're going to have 117 joules of kinetic energy in the block. Plugging in the mass of the block, that's 3 kilograms, and then solving for the velocity, we find the block is only traveling 8.85 meters per second at this point right here. All right, so I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.